today we are playing some Druid Vizier combo with Finale of Devastation, brand new out of War of the Spark. Now this is the big brother to Green Sun Zenith. It's been seeing play here and there in Elves in Standard. Hasn't quite broken the modern barrier of ice yet. Druid Vizier combo, you know it, you'll love it. It's always been a pretty fragile combo, which is why it isn't competitive as it was before. But is Finale of Devastation the missing piece that it needed to give it further searchability so that you can tutor out the combo in more ways than eight? So we're going to find that out today. So before we get started, as usual, thank you very much to all my patrons. Y'all are the reason this channel gets to keep on going. And if you'd like to support the channel as well, Patreon is the best place to do so. And with that, let's get right into the deck tech. Hope you enjoy. This video is sponsored by MTGOnlineStore.com. For the latest and greatest of MTG apparel and accessories, everything from t-shirts to backpacks, head on over to MTGOnlineStore.com and use promo code MARIN for 10% off your next order. And it also supports the show. Link is down below. So this is going to be a more combo-centric variant of Druid Vizier. We are dedicated to getting out the combo. We have many ways to search it. Usually you see Druid Vizier variants and have a little bit of interaction with like Path to Exile and such. We're going full-on combo devotion here, so let's see how that works out. So if you're unaware of how this combo works, Devoted Druid is basically a mana dork, but you can put a minus one minus one counter on him to untap him. But Vizier says you can put that many minus one. So it takes zero negative one negative one counters to untap Devoted Druid, and you get to generate infinite green mana. The next thing we want to do is get out a Duskwatch Recruiter to infinitely loot the, our entire library by activating his ability as many times as we want to dig for our win cons. So our win cons are mana sinks that we can use with this infinite mana from uh, Devoted Druid. So Walking Ballista, we can put infinite counters on it to blast our opponent for infinite damage but say they have hexproof or have like a stony silence or something so we have the backup win con of chalet which is also good to drop at any point in the game because it gives our other dudes hexproof so it protects the combo but it can infinitely put one one counters on all of our guys so that each creature we attack with should be lethal we have a couple of things to protect the combo in Spell Skite to redirect spells to it. If our opponent is trying to throw a removal spell at a devoted druid, we can redirect it to Spell Skite. And then Eternal Witness can get back the combo pieces that they kill, but also get back searchability things like Finale of Devastation coming up in a second, or things like Collected Company. So it's good tech in here to just generate some value for the mid game. And finally, Finale of Devastation is a lot like Green Sun Zenith, except it can fetch any creature, not just a green creature, um, and it also searches our graveyard as well. So if they kill the druid, we can get it back from our graveyard if we don't want to waste the ones in our library, and leave them in there for the mid-game if we expect our opponent to have a lot of interaction. So this, in combination with Court of Calling, gives us eight ways to tutor the combo. Court of Calling is sort of the same thing, but it also has Convoke, so we can tap our creatures to help generate X into it. And then Collective Company digs for the top six to find pieces of our combo as well, if not protection, like E-Wit and Spell Skite. So with all these ways to find the combo, maybe this is what this deck wanted, but we're going to find out. And of course we need our ramp because we want to be efficient, we want to get out the combo as quick as we can and not be stumped by mana. So we got two play sets of ramp in Birds of Paradise and Noble Hierarch, but we also have one copy of Elvish Mystic just because I needed the acceleration. I had to put one of them in here just because having that turn one mana dork is huge for this deck. It lets you get to your collected company a turn earlier otherwise. We got a total of 21 lands, which should be plenty given that we have 9 mana dorks, as well as the 4 druids, so we pretty much have 15 mana dorks. Horizon Canopies are our tech lands there to crack them if we need some more cards, if we need to find the combo a little bit better. And onto the sideboard, we're going to place it a Path to Exile as removal, just in case our opponent's very aggressive, or have things such as Platinum Imperion, Platinum Angel, something we may need to deal with. And then we got a couple more copies of Spell Skite if our opponent is playing a very interactive deck, a couple copies of Death Deputy of Detention, just in case there's like some kind of problematic permit we have to deal with. And then we got three copies of Teferi Time Raveler. Now this is a super spicy one. We are splashing blue for these two blue cards on our sideboard. Teferi Time Raveler is one of them. So what this allows us to do is it makes your opponent only able to cast spells at sorcery speed. So Teferi Time Raveler shuts down counter spells from our opponent's side so that we can resolve our stuff. And then we got a play set of Leyline of Sanctity to give ourselves Hexproof so that our combo doesn't get ripped apart by things like Thoughtseize and Inquisition. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. Got a game against Blue Surprise and we are on the draw. Uh, this hand is... that's a turn 3 win. That is a turn 3 win. So we're going to keep it in hopes that our opponent has no interaction. Hopefully they're just on their own little combo deck in the corner over there. Patra Bells, never heard of that. Is that like a box song? 
The serve cannon is actually a subtle word play joke. Funny coincidence, though. Uh, what what is it though? What's it a joke on? That's what I'm wondering. Okay, opponent has uh, that super cool flooded strand. Hall of Fountain Shock. So they're going to opt. So we're likely going to be interacted with here. Give me a ramp, dude. Silence? Why? I don't understand. We weren't going to cast anything on that turn anyways, opponent. Joke's on you. So opponents on uh, probably Pure Steel Paladin, I would assume, if they have Silence in the main board, I would assume Pure Steel Paladin. Delver. Okay, they're, so they're likely going to have Path here. So Blue-White Delver. Elvish Mickey. Alright, well, we're going for the combo. So, path this opponent. You gotta path it. That'll ramp me. Got a lot of stuff to do. Got a lot of finales in hand. Many dinosaurs. Trips, dinos. And if there's anything better than dupes, dinos, it's trips, dinos. I'll po what? Pact of Negation? What are you doing? Okay, they probably have Angel's Grace. They probably have Angel's Grace. What are they doing? What is going on with this deck? Why are you wasting all that? They only have two cards left in hand. Like, why are you wasting so much resources on absolutely nothing? I don't understand. They literally three for one. Silence did absolutely nothing, and then Pack plus Angel's Negation or Angel's Grace was. Oh, okay. That's what they're doing. They're trying to rapidly cast spells to exile them to Niv Magis. All right, I see you, but you're out of stuff to do. And we got another devoted druid, so you're gonna have to kill this one too. Yeah, I didn't get it either, Sir Slips. Don't draw a path. They found Days Undoing. Oh man, are they Narset? Are they Narset? Another Niv Magis. As long as you don't have a path, we're good. You could have attacked with that Niv Magis, and I wouldn't have blocked, so, just so you know. Okay, let's do it. I will finale for two. Let's go and grab a vizier. Okay, opponent did not concede and made us play through it. On the sideboarding, we are going to probably bring in Teferi because they have like Silence, Angel's Grace, or Silence, um, you know, uh, Pact of Negation and stuff like that. But I also want Paths because they're trying to go all in on a Niv Magis Elemental. Can cut the Cocos and cut like one Ewit, one Spellskite, and one Dusk Watch. And probably do it like that. I kind of want one of Deputy Detention also, just in case. You know, try like that. F for respects. Headphone warning. 
Headphone, what is that? Oh, it's a moth. Headphone warning in three, two, one. All right, we're good. All right, come on, opponent. What do you guys think about people who make people play out their combos? Do you think they're actually trying to learn, or do you think they're actually trying to time you out? So if you jumped into MTGO, what are some cheap decks to play for fun? Monogreen Stompy. Uh, oh, Jokovo already said it too. Monogreen Stompy um, is a good one. There's also Burn, like Mono Red Burn, but um, you know you could get that for like twenty something ticks. Uh, Stompy, you can Monogreen Stompy, you can get for like nothing, like Penny Dreadful. Like Mo Monogreen Stompy is dirt cheap, and you can make it pretty good. Treasure Hunt. All right, on to game number two. We got Birds of Paradise into Path Something, but we're very low on mana, so I think I have to mull. I will keep that. That is a quick chalet. And also we got the cord for one of the combo pieces. Got the sink. All we need is the druid vizier. So we got a druid. We just need a vizier. Another hierarch. I kind of want that. If you want to play burn, 12 bolt is fine. Yeah, it's a pretty cheap deck and you can, you can get it pretty cheap. Probably penny dreadful as well. I just I kept the hierarchy on top because I want to make sure I have my mana. Delver is going to. It is going to flip off of a snapback. Okay, opponent's playing some spice. So for those that don't know snapback, you can cast it for free and return a creature to its owner's hand by exiling a blue card. Opponents just two for wanting themselves all day long. I think that in the game of Magic the Gathering, you want to win by gaining value off your cards. So, uh, opponent's deck is full of anti-value, like, to the extreme, and I don't understand it. Alright, give me a druid here. Or it's a fairy would be good. Ewit, that's good. Now we can attack with the skite and then path something. Twelve bolt is like pretty underrated in my opinion. It's a pretty good one. Definitely better than the Rakdos twenty eight burn. A flip delver, yeah, that's never been that's never been seen on this channel. Yeah, thanks, Total Total P Clover, for the follow. Welcome, welcome. How you doing? What's your favorite card? Um, yeah, but we never we never flip Delvers. Like we've played Delver twice on the channel, and we could never turn one flip it ever. I don't know how that happens, but it does. All right, I will path this. I think I kicked my camera. I think it goes a little bit more this way. Are we good? Right there? Are they going to counter this, perhaps? Are they going to snap it back? Knowing that they, like, anti-value themselves all the time, I, I would assume they're going to snap back their own Delver and then recast it by exiling a blue card. So they're going to two for zero. They are actually going to do that. They are actually going to do that. Okay, wow. Opponent just loves, like, losing so much value. But, you know, this Delver could get there, but I'm going to have a Chalet, and Chalet can block. And they're going to have to reflip their Delver. Silence. Sure. 
Oh, look at that. It's a fairy. Do I want a cord for one? Probably not. Let's just attack for two, and then next turn we can e wit back the path and path again. Again, that was a one for zero. They literally one for zero to us. They're not trying to pull off any combos. Okay, I see Days Undoing and Temporal Mastery, so maybe they're trying to do some kind of just like go off turns kind of thing going on there. But they flipped their Delver again, fortunately for them. Or you know what, as opposed to... Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to Fairy. And I'm going to make them recast it. Why not cast Shalai? Because they can, like, path Shalai or deal with Shalai. Whereas Teferi bounces this, and even if they counter this, I can path it still, and that's just safer to just kill it. Why? I don't understand. <laughs> Opponent loves their zero for ones and zero for twos. I, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Are they going to target Snapback? Okay, you can cast it by exiling... I mean, sure. It's going to get bounced either way, because the fairy's here to bounce it. I mean, you can't even, you can't even cast it, because the fairy's coming down. I mean, uh, bounce Delver, draw a card. Can I get a land? That's a land. And I can stop on your draw step and probably path the snap. It feels bad, but I want to keep Teferi around. So fetch and shock, Temple Garden. Keep the fairy alive. And I can uh, e wit back a path again. This song is from Mew More. It's, uh, you know, like the Pokemon Mew, M E W, and then just add more to the end of that. It's all one word, Mew More. It's, um, let me see. It is Vampire. What is this? Vampire Slayer. Vampire Killer. Castlevania Remix by Mewmore. <laughs> Alright, so now we can tick up to Fairy. Play a Razor Verge Thicket. Ewit. Get a path back. Go attacking. Teferi is so busted. We're just beating him down with nobles. <laughs> with zero ones. Do they flip the Delver? Or nah? They reveal Giga Drouse, Which does nothing, by the way, because... You know... I have Teferi. <laughs> So I will path the insectile abortion, and they cannot respond. You were right, Sir Slips. All right, I will path the Delver.
Ooh, opponent gives us a turn to do whatever. They can't cast silence on our turn. Like, we literally have protection. Alright, now I get to throw out a druid. And, uh... What else? Oh, they just concede. Yeah, they, they give us the combo. They give us the combo, and they concede. So, it's interesting what the opponent was on. Like, I don't know. I don't know, honestly, but I would like to find out. But that's cool. We got there against Blue White Delver, and let's get another game. Got a game here against Blade Man 69er, and we are on the play, so that's great. And this hand is a combo hand. That is a turn three. So if the opponent has no removal spells, and they are mulliganing, so that is a good sign for us. As long as they... Oh, they mulled a five. Mulled a four. Oh, we have a chance here. Mold of four, and they're keeping. So they're probably just going to see what we're on and then just go from there and just sideboard. They're probably not going to reveal any information and just see what we're on. I bet it's Tron. Okay, black, green. Okay, Inquisition, so they get to take our druid. Fair, that's fair. So we're actually very slow from here, but Double Dusk Watch can beat down pretty good. So our combo is disrupted, but they're down to three cards. They have three cards left. Okay, we gotta draw some lands. Yeah, just scoop it up. That's a good emote right there. Tramagoyf. Okay, opponent's getting a pretty good draw out. I probably actually should have let my Duskwatch flip so that I can um, play an Ewit for two mana and then play a Devoted Druid for one. Alright, opponent is getting the Multifor Nut. Opponent just got the Multifor Nut. Okay, that's cool. That is 100, 1,000% a mold of Ford nut. And a bolt as well. Dang, I need a land. Give me a land. Opponent, can you stop? Just pass the turn. Stop playing stuff. Oh, man. We are getting land screwed. We need to draw lands. Wait, why did I not attack? I don't know, but if they have a blood braid, I'll happily block it. Yeah, mold four nuts. And they got the blood braid. That is insane. Blood braid and a bob. This is such a that is the greatest mold of four I've seen in my entire life. Hands down, greatest mold of four I've seen in my entire life. And I bet it is for you too. Oh, please, Dag, please. Don't do me like that. Bob reveals Swamp. Ah, oh, lucky them. They don't even take any pain. Gotta chump. Because if I draw fetch, I'm gonna want to fetch. Okay, thank goodness. Thank goodness it flipped. So now I can Ewit. And I can get back the Druid. Oh, you know what? I probably should have got back a land. 
I probably should have got back a land because with the land I could um with the land I could have gotten one closer to casting Coco. Oh, opponent top the bolt. Oh no. And they can activate Ravine. Yeah, it's over. What a nut from John there. Alright, I gotta bring in Ley Lines and Spell Skites. Um, Ewits are good though. I think I'm cutting Cocos. And cut Elvish Mystic and one Vizier. Try it like that. Path to Exile is good too, but I don't have enough room for it. Yes, I would like to be on the play. Okay, there's Leyline. But then I'm not doing much after that. Yeah, I'm not doing much at all. I got a mole. I'm not going to five, keeping that. Missy to the bottom. Dang. Just got nutted on. <laughs> Alright, well there's a there's a dude. Probably not living, but well, can only hope. Forest passes. Alright, cool. He flips. That is a lot of chords. Alright, well, uh, hopefully all these chords can get there. Oh, opponent now got the Molda 7 opposite of Knight. They got the Molda 7 trash hand. Okay, well, we got the combo. We got the combo. Leave up cord for Druid. Untap Vizier, go off. As long as they have no removal. They're fetching. Alright, they have something. Please tap out. Oh, they're tapping out. They're tapping out. We got there. Alright, cool. Cord for two. Grab Devoted Druid, untap, play Vizier. Make a bunch of mana. Make five mana. Cord for two. Grab Dusk Watch Recruiter, and that should be the game. Yeah, they concede. Alright, cool. So, no more nuts, opponent. No more nuts. It's our turn. We're gonna keep this. Or, we're gonna submit this. Come on. Good hand, opening Ley Line and Spell Skite and Ramp, dude. That's what I want. Okay, well, I'm not gonna mull this, because it's got two lands, two Ramp dudes. And I got Finale Devastation with Ewit, so seems good, but is susceptible to hand disruption. I can get my Finale Inquisitioned, and they did not have a Finale, or they did not have an Inquisition, so that's good. So get a Forest, play a Noble. Yeah, we get into Game 3. We're getting there, guys. We're gonna get there. The Prophet streaming? Oh, dang. S got real. Alright. They could have anger, which I will be bummed about, but I think I just gotta go for it. Birds and Dusk Watch. If they have a sweeper, I'm gonna be very upset. <laughs> Come on, no cause Lex return, no anger. Okay, just the Assassin's Trophy? Sure.
I would like to finale of devastation for a spell skite, but since I have two of them, I should just do it for the combo. Sure. <laughs> All right, I will discard. I will sack a bird, and then I can just attack Lily. Here's Wazir. Attack Lily for one. Now I can finale, and we have the win next turn. We have the win. For Devoted Druid. All right, opponent. All right, opponent. Do you have the kill spell? You likely do because you're giant, but maybe they don't. Thoughtseize. Oh, sure. Anything in our hand still does it. It does not matter. Thoughtseize literally anything they hit, we still have the combo no matter what they take. So that's super awesome. Thank goodness for all these uh, searchability things. They take the finale. Do they have another one? They don't? Oh, they're passing? Oh, they're sandbagging. I know it. They're 100% sandbagging. I knew it. Well, that's fine. I drew the I drew the finale. Oh, that resolve. Turn a witness. Get back druid. Play druid. All right, we got it again. Opponent, deal with it again. Go for it. Stop having removal. You already used four, like, interaction spells. Stop! Stop it! Stop! This is done. We're done. Stop it. Okay, here we go again. Finale. For two. Get back to Voted Druid. Go to combat, attack for four. Opponent, do you have another one? Do you have another one? Yeah, I could get you live, but... I want to go for the combo. Bloodbraid, in two! Inquisition, no! No, I needed that! That was my win con! Oh! Opponent, stop it! Stop interacting! Alright, but we get to crack a canopy. Ley line's cool. Play another canopy. Crack another canopy. Oh, there's our combo! There's our combo. And there we go. That'll do it. That will do it. And opponent scoops it up. And we got there against Jund. Why don't you just mold a four every time, opponent? You're, we we can beat their seven, their their entire seven card keep, but we can't beat their mold a four. That's so. Oh man, that's crazy. That was the best mold a four I've seen in my entire life. But we got there against Jund, beating the interactive dot deck with our not want to be an interacted with dot deck. So that's pretty cool. Yo, what up guys? Post-production Marin here with your typical per video speed up session. Usually we speed up the longest game in the video and this was the longest game. It wasn't like a long game by any means. It's just that our opponent was playing very, very, very slow. They're definitely probably the slowest player I ever played against in the history of playing on MTGO. Uh, that's probably because either they had bad internet or they were just learning how to use MTGO for the first time. So they thought sees us. They get to take our court of calling so we don't get to assemble our combo right away so that stalls the game a little bit. After they play Lion War Reborn, I knew immediately they're Hardened Scales, and then they follow up with the Hardened Scales just to further confirm that. And then after they play the Ink Moth Nexus, I know that they are Hardened Scales Affinity, but just splashing black for Thoughtseize, which is pretty awesome. I like that concept. Um, because since they play the Ink Moth Nexus, I know they're trying to sack a bunch of stuff to Arcbound Ravager and throw it all on the Ink Moth Nexus. Otherwise, there's no real reason to play um, Ink Moth Nexus unless they're trying to play Awaken the V2 Gazi. Um, so they play a Ballista here for four, 
uh, for two rather, and then it gets two more counters from each of the hardened scales, but then they graph the counter on it from the Land War Reborn, so it enters as a seven counter dude, and they get to wipe away a lot of our stuff. I protect my uh, Devoted Druid with a little bit with Spell Sky, forcing them to sack off their Ballista entirely or else we would win the game. So I'm just holding that Vizier until I get the Druid. I'm just uh, stalling out at this point to loot with my uh, Druid, or with my Duskwatch Recruiter, but they get the Steel Overseers, and they have the Inkmoth Nexus, and they draw a second Steel Overseer, and I know since I have no air blockers, they're just going to be able to activate it twice, and put, like, what is it, nine moment counters on their Inkmoth Nexus and get us in the air. So we go to sideboard. I bring in Path to Exiles, and uh, two copies of Deputy of Detention. And we go into the next game, we get a nice combo we hand, and we feel like we're going to combo off really quick here. So we get the Duskwatch Recruiter out, we have the Finale of Devastation to tutor out the uh, Devoted Druid. And we do that, but then we figure out that they had a, um, a Dismember, and they kill our Duskwatch Recruiter, which is a bummer. So now I have to go on the stall out plan again of activating my Duskwatch Recruiter to find another Devoted Druid. They get out double um, Hardened Scales, but I draw the Deputy Detention and I eat them up. But they do have a 6-6 six, six, uh, Arcbound Worker, and here is where they screwed up and they could have killed us. What happens is they play um, Arcbound Ravager, and what they could have done is just activated their Ink Moth Nexus and killed us in the air for lethal infect damage, but they forgot and so we get another bird and now we have chump blockers we cannot play the devoted druid we just drew yet but we can play it the next turn instead of attacking with ink moth nexus there they missed it again and they play the uh, hanger back walker so now i get to get my combo on the board and just go to blocks with my uh birds and they play a pie the needle naming a uh, devoted druid so what i do here is i block with my birds and before damage i use the quarter calling that i just topped that to a uh, cord for my second deputy detention hit the pie the needle and that allows us to combo off our opponent's timer is very low at this point because they're playing so slow like literally they only have five lands it's only like turn five or six but they're just playing so slow that they're timing out so it takes a while for our opponent to concede here, and then eventually they decide, okay, I'm going to concede. We go into the next game, and they only have like two minutes left on the clock, and I um, have to mulligan, but I do get a deputy detention, and that should be enough to stall out for a little while. And like literally, I don't even get to play it, and our opponent just sits there for literally two minutes, not even clicking anything, and that is the game. But GG's to Black Green Hardened Scales Affinity. I like that idea of splashing black for Thoughtseize. That's a super cool concept. So that's a GG. Got a game here against Farfi Nugan 1986. What a name. With Druid Vizier combo, and that is a keepable hand because Spell Sky protects the Duskwatch Critter. And then the Quatch is just gonna loot. We're gonna loot with our Quatch. I love saying that sentence. Okay, opponents mulliganing to six. Good start, good start. Any, see, any chance we'll be seeing you doing some cube while it's up? Uh, I don't think so. I uh, don't have, I really don't have the funds to do that. Um, and secondly, I got a lot of content I got to record for YouTube. And then when I'm not, when I'm not recording content, I'm editing content. So I got a lot of work to do. So, yeah, I can't, I really can't doing my best though but maybe you never know you never know what to come up if somebody you know it could be an incentive and you know somebody could like we could do it like post stream if things ever go that way because cube is fun cubing is probably the funnest format ever no it's storm Ooh, there's our devoted druid. Okay, so we can go off next turn if our opponent doesn't go off here, but that's asking a lot, because it's Storm. Once Storm untaps the Baral freely, they usually go off. So I'm F6ing here, and let's see if they're about to combo off. Usually they do. I don't think I've ever seen Storm untap with the Baral and not win. This would be a first. I've probably seen it once before. But we'll see. Four cards in hand, but that doesn't matter. As long as one of them's gifts and one of them's a ritual or a manamorphose, they got it. 
You'll dream of top decking the perfect burn spell. Seems legit. Repeal, no! Man, that's a downside of not having the spell skite. Attacks with Brawl. Taking it. Okay, there's our chord, so there's our combo. Play spell skite. Play Devoted Druid. Now we should surely have it next turn. If our opponent actually untaps the Baral two turns and does not win, I'd be very surprised. Unfortunately, I cannot F6 here. I have to click through because I do have a Spell Skite and I want to protect my Devoted Druid. He attacked with Brawl. I don't know, maybe he has Empty the Warrens and every bit of damage counts. You never know. Maybe he has it mainboard. I've seen mainboard Empty the Warrens before. Oh wow! He actually doesn't have it! That's crazy! All right, well. Cord for two. Do you have a remand? Oh, he has a remand. That's lame. That's lame. That's so lame. And we are one mana short of being able to do it again. That's super lame. Opponent is being able to tap, untap with Brawl three turns now. If they don't go off a third time in a row, a uh, third turn in a row with Brawl up, I would be, I keep saying it, but I would be mega surprised. Always dreamed red can get an effect like target non-creature permanent becomes a zero one target creature until in a turn. That'd be funny. Because there's a lot of pings happening in uh in mono red. Like what if you can have an effect that did that constantly? Like you do, there's a Serendib sorcerer, and you pair that with like Staff of Nin or something, or I don't know. Like you have Karanos as your commander or something. Turn something into a zero one and then just gets bolted every turn. Cool wombo combos. Alright, opponent, feel free to go. Oh, they're not even doing it! They're not even going off! Alright, well, sure. You shouldn't have two remands here. In Storm, you should not play more than at least a couple remands. Come on, dude, pass the turn! Don't go off here! They're tanking. Okay, they're passing. Here we go. This doesn't work. Dude. Don't unsubstantiate it. Sure. Why are you doing that at, at instant speed? Why didn't you do that on your main phase? Wow, they found another remand! They found another remand. Alright, well you're gonna need a third remand. I don't think you play a third remand. But let's court again. Court for two. Third time's a charm. Oh, it resolves. Yes. 
Yes! And that be the game. Yeah, they can see. Finally! Good they didn't make us go through pinging him 18 times. Alright, on to sideboard. Ley lines. Paths. Cut one ewit. Um, I guess we're cutting spell skites. Cut one dusk, watch one vizier. Cocos. Keep the Dusk Watch in. Or no, keep the Vizier in, right? Do I want Ley Lines? Okay, Ley Lines protect us from Gifts Ungiven and Grape Shot, but they could still go with the, uh, you know. But no, 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 because, you know, Ley Line gets bounced by Echoing Truth and Unsubstantiate and Repeal. So yeah, no Ley Lines. Remag and Coco's. Yeah. Try keeping a spell sky just in case. Oh, the one deputy. Yeah, we gotta we gotta make sure we don't make that mistake again. Bring in the one deputy. Uh cut a cocoa. The one deputy just in case they actually go for um you know the 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 empty dwarves. Oh, Spanish... Oh, there's a Modern Horizons leak? Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta cover that. I gotta cover that. Is anyone lagging? Is the stream lagging, guys? Alright, uh, Path for Baral, Spell Sky to Protect, Finale for a Vizier. It's very slow, but I'm keeping it. Because opponent feels like they're pretty new. Okay, there's a there's a druid. That's good. So we have the combo on turn three, if we want to go for it. Although I think I should go for spell skite, then devoted druid, then, you know, the thing. Path that. Yeah, I'm gonna take it slow. As much as it hurts me to take it slow, I think I have to protect the devoted druid. They start on Monday, according to tomorrow. Oh, Mark Rosewater. All right, well, let's play Devoted Druid. Don't force spike. Thank you. All right, we win next turn. Opponent, what do you got? Can you beat this? Or do we win next turn? Farfy Nugan. Oh wait, their name is Farfig Newton. Oh, I thought it was Farfy Nugan. Cause you know GN makes a makes a n noise. Literally gonna wait cryogenically freeze myself until Monday. <laughs> oh man, I I am super excited to see if we get Mother of Runes, Counterspell, and Wild Growth. Those are things that I'm hyped to see if we get. And also Baleful Strix and Shardless Agent. All right, opponent, you gotta go off now. Can you go off now? Let's find out. <laughs> no, opponent. No, you're not going to catch us like that. It's not like that. They thought they were going to catch us off guard. Ain't happening. 
They thought they were gonna, like, they, okay, I saw their tactic, I saw their tactic, I've actually, believe it or not, I'm not proud of it, but I've done that to somebody before. What you do is you wait, like, six minutes before you make a play in hopes that when they come back, they'll just misclick. <laughs> so, I actually did that back when I was a young degenerate, like, six years ago, or, like, five years ago, rather. It was, like, 2013, 2012, sometime around then. And I was like, no, I was like 2014. I think I did that one time. Because I was like, I'm not winning this game. So my only way is to make my opponent accidentally misclick. Targets me. Sure. Alright, well. Does opponent have another bolt? They have a... They have two Grape Shots, but they're down to one card left in hand, so as long as that card's not a gift I'm given, I think we got there. So we can finale here. Or no, I'm probably just going to leave up Cord. Okay, since they're killing off all our creatures, I guess I have to finale. But we still got it the following turn if they have nothing. But we actually don't have a win con anymore. We don't have an out. And never mind, we drew the Vizier naturally. Alright. I guess we have our answer. So get back Devoted Druid. Pass the turn. Opponent, you have two cards. Are any of them a kill spell? Or gifts ungiven? Let's find out. Ooh, they're going to combat. Ooh, maybe they don't have it. Attacking? Sure, I'll take it. Maybe that was the damage they needed to kill us with Grape Shot. Then I'd have regret. Oh, that's just a disparity attack. Vizier. Yeah, son. Alright, now they gotta wait and make sure we have a win con. So that's something that they have to do. Oh, wow. Do they actually draw another removal spell? Is it a remand? Or a repeal? Is it a repeal? Manamorphos. Oh, they're, they're desperate. They're desperate. Ha! <laughs> Resolved. Alright, here we go. So, let's get five mana. And let's cord for two. Grab Duskwatch Recruiter. And now we loot our library. And opponent concedes. They didn't make us click through it this time. Thank you, opponent, for conceding. And we beat Storm. We came out on top as the better combo deck, the better, faster combo deck. But it felt like the opponent was kind of new to magic. But that's cool. We got there anyways. Let's get another one. Yo, what up guys? Post-production Marin here with another speed up session in the video. Um, I sped up this game um, just because it was kind of a long game also, but additionally I wanted to just mention about what happened. I wanted to just take this time, instead of like fully commentating on this match, I just wanted to explain like the thing that happened during the stream. You might have heard um, over the past few games, you might have heard me mention it once or twice, but during the stream, we streamed like seven like nice games, like really Really good gameplay for the video and it was going well the stream was about to end and then my computer blue screened out of nowhere just so randomly and when I booted it back up um, like I lost the file I lost the recording and we had to start over so I streamed like six hours and I lost a lot of good games uh, but we got right back into it and uh, started the stream from scratch and um, tried to salvage enough games to create a video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. It uh, took a lot of work. Um, so I guess we can take the rest of this match to go over uh, who we're going up against. We're going up against JMAC2000 again. You might notice that we play against him a lot. He is a Tron player. We just happen to always run into him all the time. He keeps getting a turn 3 Tron every single time, and even in the first game, he drew natural Tron. So that is a shame. We got super close. We were able to combo off in the second game. We go to the third game. He gets natural Tron again, gets a Ballista to just fire away at our board, and they get an O-Stone, and then at that point, it's just pretty much over. But, you know, we go, we take turns going back with J-Mac, but this time he got it. But next time, we'll get him back. We'll get a revenge. 
So we got a total of four wins. We ended up with four wins. Uh, the deck did pretty good. I like how no matter what we top deck, it's like since there's four Cocos, four Viziers, or four Finales, and four Chords, it's like we have 16 copies of all of our pieces. So it's so easy to assemble the combo at the latest turn four. It's just the problem is it's interacted with, if you interact with it, it just slows you down for like two turns or a turn, and then that gives your opponent a chance to like temple you out and you know, do their own thing, and so this this deck's easy to disrupt, but, you know, the Spell Skites and the Ewits are trying to help that, uh, at least that longevity for the long game. Spell Skites obviously better protection, but I think you need at least one copy of Ewit. Maybe somehow you can go up to a place at a Spell Skite, but I was also thinking that maybe there's a way that you can go, like, full-on Bant and have Kira, the Great Glass Spinner, because Kira protects your stuff better than any better than anything does. So Kira is a good way to go, but also if you want to stick to green and white, maybe find a way to put four spell skites because you gotta protect the combo just any time. Opponent had a removal spell for a devoted druid. That slowed us down so much. Um, but yeah, I just love the fact that it's so easy to search them out. Like I like I think that I've played Druid Vizier in the past, and I think out of all the variants I've ever played of this deck, I think this one has been the most successful. So I like it a lot. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of Finale of Devastation in this deck. Um, additionally, let me know any decks you want to see for any future videos. I could take the submissions. You can leave them in the comments or email me or jamming on social media, wherever I can see your lists. And you might just see your deck on a future video. So, uh, yeah. So subscribe if you're new for the Jankies the Gameplay every other day. Go follow the social media. Links are down below. Go check out the Twitch if you want to catch the action live. Currently stream every Monday, Saturday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you very much to all my patrons. And uh, yeah, like um, if you wanted to pick up this deck as well, the decklist link is down below. That is our TCG player affiliate link. Getting the deck from there supports the channel as well. And we're going to end it out of here. And we'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.